Hello and welcome to Acrylic Code. Today we have a new tutorial on this waterfall animation. Before we continue, please subscribe to the channel to support us in making more tutorials. And we also recently launched our Patreon with different tiers to get access to all our Dutch designer files, exclusive online meetups to learn together, access to our online tools and more. I will leave the link in the description box in case you want to have a look. Now back to our tutorial. To begin with, we're going to create a line soap render it and then we'll create a particle system based on this line. So let's press tab and add a line sop. Press tab again and we're going to attach a geometry and a camera. Next let's attach a material, drag and drop it onto the geo and select parameter material. Press tab again and attach a render top. At the out of the render, press Alt and N on the keyboard to attach a null and turn on the display flag. Right click on the connecting line before the null, go to Add Operator and attach a transform. On the parameter window, set the alpha parameter to 1 and turn on Comp over Background Color. This will give us a black background. Great, now we have our line. Let's go to the parameter window of the camera and decrease the translate Z value so that the camera goes closer to the line. Let's go to the parameter window of the line and we're going to set the x value of point A to 1. So we have the line stretch from minus 1 to 1. To get rid of this border here, I'll go back to the camera and further decrease the distance to the line until about 2.4. Now for the next part, we have to move the line all the way to the top because later we're going to create particles that fall down from the top to the bottom. So let's set the x value of both point A and point B to 0.6. Then the line will not be visible anymore, but if we zoom in to the camera comp, we can see that the line is still there. Now between the line sop and the geo, we're going to connect the sort sop. In the parameter window, let's set the point sort to random. Right click after the sort, go to insert operator and attach a particle sop. If we zoom in, we can see that the particle sop is only creating these two dots. This happens because the number of points parameter on the line sop is set to 2. Let's go ahead and change the number to 5000. Now, if we zoom in and hit play, then all the other particles will get filled in. Now, in the parameter window of the particle sop, let's set the bird parameter to 1000. And we're also going to apply some forces for the particles to fall down. So let's go to the forces tab and we'll set the wind y parameter to something negative. Now, if we do this, the particles will fall up to a certain point and then stop. To fix this, let's go to the particles tab and set the life expect parameter to 5. This way, the particles will fill the whole screen. Now for the next part, we don't want the particles to just be points, but rather have a little trail, so they look more organic. To achieve this, we can create a feedback network ourselves or use the feedback from the palette. So let's drag and drop it onto our network and we're going to connect it between the render and the transform. This will give us the effect we want. Now to make this a bit more interesting, we can add some turbulence in all three directions and tweak the period. The higher the period, the more extreme the movement will be. And in here you can play with the other parameters to get different effects on the whole shape. Now we notice that the trail is a little rigid, so to change that we scroll into the feedback and in this network let's make some more space and in between the level and the over we're going to add a displace operator. Let's right click on the second input and we're going to attach a noise. This will be very intense in the beginning and this is because the displace weight is set to 1. Let's first set it to 0 and from here we go slowly higher. From here, go to the noise parameter window, toggle off the monochrome parameter and set the period to 2. In here, we can also play with the harmonics parameter. When the harmonics are 0, then we don't see a lot of changes. But if we set it all the way to 10, then we get this effect on the particles where they kind of look like tiny little fish. I will set this parameter to 2 for now. Now let's scroll out back to the original network and we're going to introduce some color into the particles. To do this, I will attach a lookup between the feedback and the transform. Right click on the second input of the lookup and let's attach a ramp top. 
If we leave it like so, the colors will also affect the background. So if we instead want to change the gradient of the particles only, then we need to bypass the lookup and connect the feedback to the ramp. So now the ramp has the same resolution. After the lookup, we right-click and attach a multiply. Connect the ramp to the second input of the multiply top. So now we have a gradient on our particles on a steel black background. From here we can go to the ramp and change the colors or add new colors entirely. We can also change the type of ramp for the gradient. Of course, if you want the colors not to stay fixed, but rather be random, we can attach a noise before the ramp. Go to Output and set the parameter to Noise. Go to the Noise tab and toggle off the monochrome parameter. Let's go ahead and connect the noise to the multiply and we'll get this extreme effect with noisy colors. To dial this down, we go to the Transform tab and decrease the scale on all three directions. From here you can try all the effects of the noise by tweaking the parameters or you could also make this react to sound. Another thing we could do is animate the color changing with time by typing in the parameter z of the translate abs time that seconds and we can multiply this with 0.5 but this is going to be a little extreme so I'm going to multiply it with 0.1 for a subtle animation. This was just to see what's possible. For now, I will disconnect the noise and stick to the ramp only. If you don't like these empty spaces appearing on the sides, then we can go back to the line and have point A start at minus 2 and point B at 2. This, on the other hand, will cause the grid to be less dense, but we can fix this by increasing the particle count on the particle SOP. And this was it for the tutorial. From here, you can be creative by changing parameters or going into the feedback and tweaking the values or adding entirely new operators. I hope you enjoyed watching and learned something new. If you have questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments and I'll see you next Friday with another video. Until then, have a great time. Bye!